Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 119 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 2-5 session at Orange City Racing and Card Club, and we are going to get right into some hands. So we arrive at Orange City Racing and Card Club, looking to have a good day at the poker tables. Max buying at the 2-5 is $800, so that's what I buy in for. And we start out at a new table. It's only playing four-handed right now. So at a four-handed table, I button straddle. There are two callers before I raise to $30 with ace-10 off suit. Well, the big blind decides to limp raise to $85. And in general, I'd say a limp raise should just be a fold. But when it's four-handed and I'd been stealing a lot of hands up to this point, I just expect a little bit of fight back against me who's being very aggressive. So I decided to make the call, get to play the entire hand in position, and we are heads up to a flop of 10-9-6 rainbow. Pretty good board flop and top top. My opponent continues for $125. I see no other option besides just calling. My opponent could still have ace, king, ace, queen, all the random missed ace x's that have backdoor flush draws, and I am well ahead of all of those holdings. When the turn is the three of hearts, my opponent does not slow down. He continues for $250. And again, playing four-handed, I think it's much more likely my opponent's just not giving up on an ace x hand than actually having a strong hand. Additionally, you can have hands like Queen Jack, King Queen, gut shots that still have some equity and some overs that don't want to give up. So, still being ahead of plenty of his range, I decided to make the call a second time. The river is the queen of clubs. Now, if he bets, thinking I just have to fold, I now lose to King Queen, Ace Queen. Plenty of the hands that I was beating the previous two streets now improve. But now my opponent checks to me. Happily check it back. I don't see myself getting value from worse. But on this hand, my opponent had pocket kings. Not a good start at all. We begin almost $400 in the hole. Oh, shoot. What? 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 On the next interesting hand, there is a button straddle. Two players limp, and I raise to 40 with ace-king offsuit. Definitely an above-average hand worth a raise. A middle position player calls, and both the limpers fold. So we're going heads up, out of position to a flop of ace-8-4. Great board for me, top pair, top kicker. I would continue here almost all the time. But I look over, my opponent's already assembling a bet, which kind of gets alarm bells going off in my head. Like, typically when you're thinking about sizing, you look over, your opponent's already disregarding that it's your action, just decide how much money they're going to put in. I'd say it's pretty strong, so I check to my opponent. He bets $35. I happily call a bet of that size. Turns the Jack of Hearts. Kind of a bad card for me, as one of the hands my opponent may play this way is Ace Jack. Just flops top pair, decent kicker, and feels he's good. Now that hand completes. Having the King of Hearts in my hand means I'm a little less afraid of flush draws. But when I check, my opponent is not afraid of flush draws. As he bets $75. I consider raising this hand. Having the nut blocker and top pair is pretty good. I'm not sure how often I get a flopped set to fold. If my opponent had a hand like 5-6 of hearts and I raise and he just jams, I pretty much have to fold all the equity I have. So... I'm going to play this one a little bit more passive, very results and live read oriented, and I choose to just call. River is the queen of clubs. Again, a horrible card for me. If my opponent's not ace queen, queen of hearts, that gets there too. And this card still does not dissuade my opponent in the slightest. He continues for the third barrel, $175. He didn't even have that big of a stack to start with, so with alarm bells just blaring in my head that you somehow have the worst hand and you should fold, I eventually listen to it and I just let it go. When my opponent shows both of his neighbors the hand he had, I request to see it as, I'm curious, if you show one person the class, you gotta show them all, sir. And he has ace eight of spades. So definitely a good flop for my opponent. I'd say a risky river bet as I could easily just have hearts and I'd call with ace jack ace queen. I had the one hand that did not beat ace eight. So nice hand for my opponent. I'm getting moved to the main game so seat changes a little bit and happy to move as the last chair was not doing very well for me. I button straddle with three limps. I raised to $50 with pocket queens. Two of the players decide to call, so we're going three ways to a flop 
of 1109, two diamonds. When it checks to me, I'm not interested in checking back, get value from flush draws, get value from weaker pocket pairs like eights, sevens, sometimes jacks, maybe an ace, nine suited, things such as that. So I continue for $60. Only one of my opponents decide to call. Okay. Let's see a clean turn card. Five of diamonds, not very much what I'm looking for. When my opponent checks to me, I think this is a clear check back spot. When the obvious flush draw completes, I would check 100% of my range, whether I had ace 10 or an over pair. I think I can mix in some bets sometimes, but that's only because I would bet if I was betting with a flush draw. Without even the queen of diamonds, I think it's a little too thin to go for a bet here as we're not even semi bluffing. So I check it back. River is the ace of diamonds. Horrible card, four diamonds on board. We have zero diamonds. My opponent checks to me. I really expect my opponent to bet if he had a single diamond, but he may check a 10 as this is kind of a horrendous board for him. But deciding my opponent's kind of relegated to either a made flush or three of a kind, I just decided not try to turn these queens into a bluff. I think that they have just enough shuttle value to beat some missed straight draws and some smaller pocket pairs that would call one flop bet. So I just checked this one back. My opponent has pocket sixes. Great news for me, except one of the sixes is a diamond. Kind of a gross run out, but I definitely had my chance to steal this one away. Next hand of note. I button straddle again with two limps. I looked down at pocket aces, the greatest hand ever pre-flop in Texas Hold'em. I raised to $40. I don't need to go too big as I would like to get some action. It's the only way I'm going to be able to dig myself out of the hole I keep diving deeper into. Well, three of my opponents decide to call, so we're going four ways to a flop of 10, 4, 5, 2 clubs. Definitely a board I'm super comfortable with. No one should really have 4, 5 all too often. Well, a middle position player leads into me for $50. I think a raise would be in order if I did not have the ace of clubs. I see a lot of these weak, small leads when people are betting with flush draws, but blocking the ace high flush draw takes away a lot of those possibilities and leads them more weighted towards made hands, like four fives, pocket fours, pocket fives. But I think this opponent would also do the same thing with ace 10, 10 nine, 10 jack some of the time. I've seen him lead with top pair into the aggressor, played with him a few times. So I'm actually not worried about being behind at this point. So I decided to just make the call and reevaluate on the turn. When the turn is the seven of spades, my opponent bets again, $75. Now I think my hand could just function pretty happily as a pure check call down. If my opponent had a hand like six, seven, he might play the same way. I'm still beating that. Maybe medium clubs, queen, jack, and still the ace, 10, 10, nine, things like that. I'm still beating. So I think my hand functions fine. It's just a call. So so that's what I do. River is the six of spades. And now my opponent bets 100. At this point, being led into and bet all three streets, I'm trying to pick out a hand that could actually do this and I could be losing to. I don't really see a set being able to bet this river with a four line round board. And for my opponent to just lead on the flop and have a straight, he has to have like four, three or seven eight seems pretty implausible especially the flopped clubs missed he could still be turning a single pair like 10 9 into a bluff maybe even six seven into a bluff obviously losing to the six seven combination but that's really the only hand i see myself losing to and being all the missed flush draws and all the flop top pairs win over 500 so i just make the call things pretty standard and my opponent shows 10 8 so yeah just led with a top pair and went runner runner straight on me in very disguised and odd manner definitely was not expecting that Trust this guy. <laughs> next interesting hand with one limp i raised to 20 with seven eight of spades hope to get something going suit connector on the button definitely good enough to play only limper call so we're heads up to a flop of 873 all diamonds great scenario for me when my opponent checks to me i think two pairs too strong to check back even on a monotone board i can get called by the naked ace of diamonds king of diamonds maybe 10 9 or 5 6 sometimes and maybe even just random pocket pairs that are disbelieving with a single diamond so i bet 25 dollars my opponent decides to min raise to 50 kind of an irritating spot but i'm really not going to fold for 25 more dollars so i make the call Turn is the 10 of hearts, and on this card, my opponent bets 100. I do believe 9, 10, single diamonds, things such as that might play the same way. 
Two pair, I believe, is too strong to fold, so I make the call. The river is the Ten of Diamonds. Absolutely gut-wrenchingly horrendous card. My opponent, for some reason, had jacks or queens or even just nines. I just got counterfeited. If he had just the single ace of diamonds, that's probably feeling pretty confident right now. When my opponent checks to me, uh, this has just not really been my day. Not really trying to blast off here, and I don't really expect any good flush to fold, even though the board paired. Most players don't even fold single pairs, let alone flushes, so... I just checked this back, kind of lamenting my fate at this river card. But my opponent had 4-5 of diamonds. So this might have actually been the one of the few flushes and few river cards that I could have got a bluff to work on. But say in general, I'm just going to be snap called with all better hands. Either way, this one, I had the opportunity to steal away. Just not the stones to try it. Next interesting hand. I'm in early position. I raised to $20 with king-queen offsuit. There's one caller before a later position player raises to 90. This table had actually been extremely action-packed, and this opponent had 3-bet probably 3 times in the last hour, so definitely a higher than normal 3-betting percentage. So against a super aggressive player, I think King-Queen is fine to call 3-bets with. So I call. The other player calls as well, so we're going 3 ways to a flop, which is Queen High. Great for me, finally making a pair. Feel like I actually have a winning hand at this point. But I'm still going to check to the three better. Middle position player checks and the three better decides to go all in for about $800. So 3x pot jams, kind of odd. I do expect ace king, ace jack, ace 10 to play the same way at some frequency. Some players just decide to continuation bet when they three bet because they feel like they have to. Even when they miss the board completely, I've seen plenty of ace kings just bet all three streets on a three bet when they just whiff and they're unwilling to give up. So I think it's a pretty easy call for me, especially in the fact that I only have like $350 in my stack. So almost a full triple up to call with top pair good kicker and be correct. Not in the mood to fold when all day I've been dealing with extremely scary boards and this one is one I don't really consider it to be one. Additionally, having the king of clubs gives me back to our clubs, back to our straight draw. So the times that I'm beat by like ace queen, I do have a little bit of backdoor equity. When I make the call, my punt shows pocket aces. <laughs> really did not expect my opponent to 3x pot jam with aces on this board. Especially when you have two callers, like any opponent can have pocket jacks, pocket queens, queen jack. Guess he's going for max protection against club draws. But either way, we still have some outs, some percentage. Oh boy, the turn is the three of clubs. I'm not dead. And the seven of hearts does finish me off. Less than ideal, you know. You run into better hands all day and you think that it can't keep continuing, so you decide to put your foot down, but... Yes, sir, you can just run into it several times in a single day. It's possible. It's not abnormal. You know, don't lose your discipline. So I changed tables again. That one was not feeling it for me. And this leads us to a final hand of note. I'm in early position. I raised to $20 with pocket jacks. Very standard. Three later position players call. So we're going four ways to a board that is 10 high. 10, 8, 7 rainbow. Feel pretty good about pocket jacks. I decide I'm going to bet a little over half pot because any card higher than a jack to hit the turn would kill a lot of my action. Maybe not really know where I'm at. So I raise to $50. My opponent on my left raises to 230 and then it folds back to me. This bet I just peg very narrowly to exactly 10-9 or 9-8, something like that. I think most players would pick pair plus straight draw as a raising candidate in this spot. And the few times that I'm against two pair, I have plenty of suck out outs and just nines to give me a straight. So this is one where I think I'm ahead a lot of the time and I'm just going to put it in there. Hopefully I'm against a single pair plus straight draw and we can hold. When I put my opponent all in, he snap calls. Wasn't really expecting him to raise fold, but either way, we still have to see the run out. Ace on the turn, not the greatest. My opponent could have ace nine some of the time. Jack! Yes, I have trips. I win. Oh, nope. Opponent had 9-7 off suit.
<sighs> the all-in was for about $550. And today is just simply not my day. <laughs> I'm open-ended. You expect me to fold, bro? Are you serious? For this vlog specifically, the results are I lose $2,100, which it's relatively big at just two five, almost three buy-ins. Obviously, there were some hands that I won that did not make the video because I think the overall theme of this session was premiums getting cracked, some pretty gross runouts, and then coming to spots where you theoretically could get your opponent to fold if you were playing a little bit better, but then choosing a more passive route because of how bad you were running. I think it's important to recognize those spots more than the flopping top pair and getting one bet in on the flop and everyone folding turn. But either way, there will always be more to come next week. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.